Hello, I'm Shaka Khan, and you're watching Destination Jazz. Welcome to Destination Jazz TV. Uh, Destination Jazz is a TV show that travels around the world to international jazz festivals. And we interview jazz artists, local restaurateurs, we explore local culture, and we just explore exotic locations that host international jazz festivals, whether it's uh, in one of the beautiful European cities or exotic locations like the Caribbean island, Destination Jazz has been there. And during this uh, stay home current policy, we thought it would be a great time to con continue to connect with the international jazz community. And we are thrilled today to chat with international jazz musician, TK Blue. Let's welcome TK Blue. Hey, Cheryl, how are you doing? Hey, I'm fine, TK. Welcome to Destination Jazz TV. We're so excited to have you join us on this uh, beautiful Saturday in the New York City tri-state area. Yes, it's a wonderful day, and I'm really ecstatic and so happy to, to be uh, with you today live. Uh, I'm in my music room in Jersey City, in, in, uh, you know, uh, like everyone, um, still trying to process uh, everything that has transpired in the last uh, two months and uh, trying to also plan going forward uh, how to survive as a musician, perform and bring love to people through music. Uh, it's, it's, it's gonna be a, 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 a definitely a, a very difficult task because as you know, Cheryl, music, uh, you've been around the world through the jazz festivals and, and Music is such an integral part of life, of the fabric of society. Uh, everything uh, has some type of music to accompany it. And not being able to play for people live for audiences, because it's a very spiritual thing that happens when you play live for people. There's a give and take. There's a sharing between the artists and the audience. And they become one. And um, the, the artist is able to heal people through the music that comes through them, through, through the most high. And it, it, it's a win-win for everyone. And not having this opportunity now with the current uh, situation, uh, it, it's it's going to be a, a def definitely a difficult task going forward, but uh, not insurmountable. And I think what you're doing is so important, uh, bringing uh, artists to people through the internet to see that they're doing okay and hanging in there. and still practicing and composing and, and trying to move forward, uh, keeping the faith that things exactly. will turn around. We have to keep the faith that things will turn around uh, in an optimistic level. And well, we today can... people can actually say, I was chilling at home or I was chilling with TK in his music room today. Right, no <laughs> doubt, no doubt, no doubt. This is the, but, in fact, this is my first uh, broadcasts uh, on the internet. I know a lot of musicians have been doing them on a daily basis, and this is my first one. So I'm really happy to be uh, with uh, with you, Cheryl, on Destination Jazz. Well, you know, honestly, it has been the arts that has been able to sustain us and to provide us with, you know, some sense of, you know, sanity as we, you know, kind of try to stay home to be able to protect not only ourselves and our family, but then also others out in the world. But it's been visual arts, musical arts, uh, I've seen dance performances, literature, every time we're Netflixing um, in our homes, that's art, it's film. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this is a time where we can honestly say that uh, the creative arts has been what has been able to sustain society, mm -hmm. been able to connect with us. You know, you see around the world where musicians will go out on their balconies and play little children and during recitals on the lawn for their grandparents because it is the arts that truly is the fabric you know of our society and it, and it has sustained us so we're we're thrilled that you're sharing your talents with us today and we mm -hmm. hope that this is the first of many broadcasts for mm -hmm. you until audiences can be able to to see you in person mm -hmm. so for those who don't know like, you know, the one or two people out there in the world, who you are, tell us, tell us 
about TK Blue. Oh, well, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't know who I am, but thank you so much. Um, yeah, TK Blue, that's my performing name. T stands for Talib, which means student, and K stands for keyboard, which, which means blessed. I feel like a blessed student, and blue is my favorite uh, color, is my favorite color. And I used to wear blue jeans to school every day, so the kids nicknamed me uh, Blue. So that's what I came up with, uh, TK Blue, actually during a, a recording opportunity I had with Arcadia Records so, about 20 years ago. So I've been using TK Blue ever since. Um, I've been very, very fortunate to have met and been around many uh, of the great masters of, of, of this music. And um, the first musician internationally that I was able to connect with after I graduated, I went to school in New York, uh, Long Island High School, but in New York City, I went to NYU, where I got my uh, bachelor's in music and in uh, psychology, and then I went to Columbia, where I got my master's in music education. And shortly after uh, graduating, I connected with a great musician from South Africa, Abdullah Ibrahim. And that was basically my, my first uh, uh, international tour, and the first time I went to Africa, which really changed my life completely. And uh, from there, I, I decided to, to move to Paris, where I spent most of the 80s in Paris uh, performing and recording. I did my first recording there. And I also connected with another great musician while I lived in Paris, the great Randy Weston, who was living in Annecy, France during, uh, during that time period. So we connected and started working a lot together. And then by the, by the 90s, I became his musical director and started doing many, many recordings and a lot of tours. And it's just been an incredible experience. And Randy made his transition uh, on the September 1st of 2018. And in fact, uh, this month of April, we were going to celebrate his 94th birthday on April 6th, but unfortunately, uh, with the virus and everything that, that, that transpired, uh, all of these concerts had to be postponed. Um, so, so since then I've been just performing uh, with a lot of people, uh, Chico Hamilton, Sam Rivers, did recording with Sam and, and a, whole, uh, a whole bunch of folks and a lot of African groups. Uh, going to Africa for the first time really changed my life. And in fact, uh, one of the reasons I moved to Paris was to learn French so I can go back to West Africa, a lot of the countries there uh, that I was traveling to initially, uh, are Francophone countries, you know, Senegal and Cote d'Ivoire and uh, uh, Cameroon and, uh, you know, a lot of these places, even in Morocco, uh, Tunisia, they speak French. So that was a huge asset, uh, learning a little bit of the language so I could communicate with many of the musicians that I met uh, on my travels. So it's been an incredible journey for me um, coming back to the States in, in, in the 90s and um, again, traveling and recording and just trying to uh, keep some sanity uh, in, in these current times because uh, now, you know, we're in a situation that we can't touch each other, we can't reach out to each other physically, uh, we can't be together, uh, but the spirit is strong and I think the music uh, will carry us through. It's also very healing, like all the arts. As Cheryl pointed out uh, candidly, it, it, all the arts are suffering, not just music. Uh, we can't see dance, you know, even film. Everything has come to a, to a halt. So things will get better. Things are going to turn around. And uh, as artists, we just have to keep uh, refining our, our craft and working at it and keep, keep it uh, relevant and fresh so that we can move forward uh, positively when things turn around. So that's pretty much uh, where I'm at now. Um, I did a stint of teaching also uh, as a full-time professor at Long Island University for seven years, running the jazz uh, program there. And I've taught also at uh, other universities. But right now I'm just concentrating primarily on composing and performing. And, and trying to keep my spirit positive and strong and also keep myself in shape physically. That's another thing too, uh, Cheryl, that a lot of folks during this time period, have, you know, the emphasis has been on uh, staying home, also wearing a mask and wearing gloves, but you also have to keep in shape physically, keep the, uh, cause that will help you, uh, God forbid any of us would catch the, this virus. If we're in good shape, we'll, 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 we'll win, you know, 
So TK, can you give us a little dose of medicine by playing a, a little bit of your music? I sure will. Um, in fact, uh, I was talking to my, my doctor yesterday and he's on the front lines uh, battling in, in, in Jersey uh, over at Inglewood Hospital. So I, I like to play a song um, and dedicate it to all of these the workers, the, the doctors, the nurses, the aides, all, they risk their lives every day Exactly. To, to save us, to, 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 to give us treatment in the hospitals. And also uh, my condolences and sympathy uh, go out to all the families that have lost people to this virus and all of the great artists and musicians that have passed away uh, because of this virus. Um, it, it's mind-boggling. So many were very, very close uh, to me. So I'm going to play a song for you that's been recorded a few different times with, in different scenarios on different recordings of mine, uh, including one by, uh, I recorded it at least three times, and then also it's been recorded uh, by the Jazz Expressions and also by the great Benny Powell, who's one of my mentors. And this song is called The Single Tear of Remembrance. All right. All right, I don't know about everybody else, but I already feel better. <laughs> oh, wow, thank you so much. I feel better too. I mean, <laughs> it's a healing force, not just for the listener, but it's also a healing force for the practitioner as well. So, All right, so I'm doing the collective clap for everybody that's <laughs> watching. We've got a lot of your fans watching. <laughs> that was just, you know, spectacular. So TK, as an international jazz artist, mm -hmm. how has your your travels internationally influenced you as a musician and as a person? Oh, very much so. I mean, the, the first and the most vital and integral influence uh, that I can think of is just being able to go to Africa. That really mm -hmm. opened up my eyes tremendously 
to culture and music, hearing things that I uh, I could see uh, the, the 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 roots. They say freshly resin, the roots of a lot of music that's happening all over the world. Um, culturally, you know, we, we have that phrase here in the states, love and hospitality. Then you see where that comes from. Um, you know, so much, and also it, instrumentally. Uh, it was a huge influence because I, I got really attracted to the instrument known. Uh, well, I'll show you one. Uh, okay. This one uh, is called a kalimba. Um, but, the, you know, in the States here, we, we, we call it the African piano or thumb piano. I don't like to use the word thumb piano because I play it with all of my fingers, not just my thumbs. And um, also, there's different types of, of this instrument. Uh, there's different names. For example, uh, this one I bought in 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 Senegal when I was there last September. Okay. I was on the island of Goree, and, and the, the guy that I got this from he called it the Mongo, Mongo. And I've also heard names called the um, Embira, mm -hmm. Anza. You can be. They come in all different sizes, shapes. Um, some you put inside calabash bowls to get a resonant sound. And there's a gentleman I want to mention, very important. Um, he may still be alive. Uh, if he is, he would be probably 102. Wow. And last I checked, he was alive. And when he was 101, he was alive and doing well. Well, you know, as best as can be for 101. Nadi Kamar, Nadi Kamar, fantastic artist, musician. He's out in the Midwest now, but uh, he lived in New York and he's also performed, he's a pianist. He performed with Charles Mingus and many, many uh, great musicians. And he decided to play the African hand piano and he built one called the Mama Lukembi, which had uh, over a hundred keys and he could he could make chord changes. He, he, could, he could move chromatically. Mm -hmm. Stanley Cowell is another great artist who plays the kalimba, and he has one as well that's uh, chromatic. But um, this instrument, in, in fact, uh, really influenced me quite a bit. And I also composed quite a few songs on this instrument. So um, I could play something for you. If you oh, want. I would love it. <laughs> well, what I'll do is I'll play a little bit uh, so you can hear the sound. Okay. And I, I recorded this instrument uh, with my digital recorder mm -hmm. and I'll play the flute and we'll do a song and this song actually we're going to do is actually on, on my new recording called the rhythms continue and okay. it's called, called the wise one speaks so this is what this instrument sounds like just to give you a, a, an example <laughs> be the opening to um, The Wise One Speaks. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play for you The Wise One Speaks. I'm going to play the kalimba from my recorded uh, version that I just played, and then okay. I'm going to play the melody on the flute, so we'll hear The Wise One Speaks. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
My pleasure. The wise one speaks. Yes, yeah, dedicated to um, to the great uh, Dr. Randy Weston, um, who uh, NEA jazz master, and uh, I just had the fortunate uh, career to have been with him for 38 years. Right. With him, and uh, you know, we did so many different projects together, as well as uh, I had the opportunity to arrange some music for him for some projects, one in particular called the James Reese Europe Suite, uh, dedicated to the great uh, pioneer James Reese Europe during World War One, and the 369th column Hellfighters who went to Europe to help the French fight against the Germans and at night mm -hmm. music. It was the first time jazz actually was taken out of the country and taken okay. And it's why in France they have so many jazz festivals. Uh, there. And another uh, uh, suite uh, that I arranged for Randy was called Ancient Future. So, yeah, that was dedicated to him. And it's on the new minor recording called The Rhythms Continue. Okay. So, I have a few additional questions regarding the kalimba. I sure. see that I know that you have a, a wide collection of them. Do you typically um, like a certain number of keys on the ones that you play, or do you? Well, yeah, each kalimba, each kalimba is different. You you basically have to deal with. Let me show you. Give you some examples. Um, you know, you you have to really uh, deal with what you have in the sense that um, some of them are adjustable. You can adjust mm -hmm. the tuning. Okay. Uh, and then some are not uh, that adjustable. Some have, like for example, this particular kalimba. Now I replaced the keys. This one, the original keys that came with this, um, they didn't last very long. This is a calabash. Okay. It was cut in half and they put a piece of wood and then they put the keys. So I made these keys myself out of what's called electrician's fish wire. It's very thick uh, cable. And it has a great sound. So, so depending on the number of, of prongs will determine how many notes you have, and all of that will determine 
how you want to tune it, what your mm -hmm. possibilities are, like this one. <laughs> You know, you, you have um, kind of pentatonic scales. I okay. Used to, they sound pretty good with the kalimbas. And then this new one that I just have, uh, I'm really excited about uh, this one here. Okay. Because this one has a pickup. Oh, okay. So I don't I don't have to worry about having the mic on top of it. And then I'm going to turn this on so you can hear how it sounds. So I can put some reverb. Uh huh. about this the possibilities with this okay because, um, now i can be heard i can plug it in the way a guitar player plugs into an amp and um and, and away you go <laughs> oh you're like a kid in a, ki a kid yeah. in a kalimba store <laughs> for sure for sure so you know tk we talked about you know the fact that we're all staying home and i think it you know during your initial introduction you alluded to the fact that you know how difficult it is for you know musicians because you have that kind of exchange with your audience a live audience to get that you know instant feedback mm -hmm. um and you know we really just don't know how long you know we'll we'll really be home and then how long it will take us to kind of phase into um the next phase of this new normal Mm -hmm. How, as a musician, have you been spending your time um, during this uh, current stay-home policy? Well, um, the main thing, as I mentioned, first is and, you know taking care of my body, exercising, and 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 praying, doing a lot of praying, mm -hmm. a lot of praying for everybody, for the world, for the planet. Um, I also, I was always also try to find always some type of light out of the darkness. And every time there's an ad adverse situation, you know, there's always something positive you can gain from it or learn from it so that maybe you don't make the same mistakes. But exactly. One thing I've noticed that, that is more positive things is I ride, I, I bike ride for exercise and um, riding down by Liberty State Park before they close the park, I noticed, that even now I go near there, but, but not in the park, I noticed the, the, the skyline of New York uh, is less small. It's, and it's beautiful. It's, it's wonderful. I mean, uh, the, the planet is get, has been given a, a short reprieve from all the pollution. And it, it, the pollution on this planet is very devastating. You know, I scuba dive and, and, and love being by the water. And even being in Africa last September, it was uh, I was at this May going way outside the, the, the capital of Dakar, but along the coast and still seeing uh, along the beach, uh, lines and lines of garbage and plastic. And it's not just in Southern Island, it's all over. It's, it's, it's all over the world. All over the world. All now, have you world. noticed that I actually hear birds singing way more than oh, I have yeah. ever. Everything, everything. <laughs> so it's almost it's like a way of, with the creator saying, hey, you know, we have to change our habits. We got to slow down. We have to change how we're operating because we're, we're, we're making, uh, mankind is making many uh, negative things against Mother Earth and it's not a positive scenario and nothing positive is going to come out of it, only something negative. So we have to really deal with climate change, really adhere to, to the planet and treat the planet like it's your brother, like it's your sister, like it's your mother, like it's your father. You know, you wouldn't throw garbage at your mother or father or your sister or your brother. So don't throw garbage in the street. 
you know, people do it all the time. You have to treat the planet, you know, very, you know, carefully. It's very fragile. And as you can see right now, just one little tiny micro has shut the, shut the planet down completely. So Exactly. Uh, and just the benefit of when we've all shut down. No doubt. Look what's happened. No doubt. They, they've been able to see the Himalayas in India for the first time. The first, I'm sure. I'm sure. Dolphins have appeared in the Venice I'm Canal. Sure. So much fog over LA is pretty much non existent, yeah. and you know, LA looks beautiful, it's you know, on the skyline. So, this might be maybe this could be the start of something good when we come out of this the, the particular crisis. But the other thing that I've been doing a lot, also, and also practicing, you know, as musicians, uh, everyone who's an artist, a musician, or a dancer, or whatever your art form, painter, mm -hmm. uh, poet writer you, you you stay busy you, you, you find inspiration uh i've been finding inspiration to compose in fact uh the clip i played for you i came up with a melody i was just playing around with it and i came up with this melody okay <laughs> I did. I came up with that line, and then I went to the piano to uh -huh. find harmony for the line. Okay. With um. are kind of the um the things you want to do or you, you know i want to so that that song at the beginning of the song i just came up with on the kalimba and then i decided i put some chords to it i'm going to work and get a get a bridge on it and, and have a song and, I, and i'm going to try to do this more often uh with this time that we have so that coming out of uh, the isolation perhaps we'll be able to a lot more new recordings will take place Mm -hmm. and, uh, listen, I'm sure musicians are going to be fired up, ready to play. Uh, oh, I think we're going to have the hottest jazz around playing in the clubs. I'm going to be listening myself to hear some of these great artists when they, mm -hmm. when, they un when they unleash, get back out to play with other musicians. Because you know, the, the bandstand and playing with musicians is a, it's a deeply spiritual experience. It's like going mm -hmm. to church or to the mosque or to the synagogue. It's a deeply spiritual, the Kingdom Hall, any of the, it, playing music, being on the bandstand, um, opening your heart, your soul to the creator, mm -hmm. allowing the vibrations of the creator to come through you and, and, and to create uh, and to have this beautiful uh, music or whether it's a painting or whether you're a choreography or whatever it is, your, your medium, uh, a sculpture, uh, a writer, whatever your, your, you know, the inspiration goes into that work and uh, the people hear it, they, they read it, they see it, uh, they, they listen, they, 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 it moves them it, sometimes to tears. Mm. And, and that's when you know your, your, your job is, is, is done. That's when you know when you touch somebody, you know, and, and so that they feel inside uh, what it is you're trying to convey, you know. And, it, and it's such an interesting time, as you said, for creatives because you know, with the world at a standstill, it's like a reset moment. It's that time, you know, for us non-artisans, it's time to like clean out that closet we wanted to clean out, rearrange a room. Right. But I think, you know, as creatives, it's a time to explore ideas that you may have had, you know, for musicians, a song, or like you said, a melody that sure. came into your head, you translated it to the piano. And then, you know, you, you, you had that moment and that time to really expand upon ideas. 
No, definitely, no doubt. You, you hit it right on the head. You know, it's, it, it's uh, and you know, it's also a great time reset to just be with your loved one and with your families too. You know, um, our, our world with technology has gotten so advanced that it's gotten kind of impersonal. We don't look at each other anymore. You know, I noticed when I'm on the train, um, everybody's in their phone. Nobody is even looking at each other. You know, everybody's on their phone or on their laptop and on the computer. So, so it's it's we lose some humanity with that. You know, absolutely. And you know, physical distancing doesn't mean social distancing. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, you know, not only what we're doing here, but you know, you can video and FaceTime and Skype video, and now you know, Messenger video with you know friends and family. Um, right. And I know as an international musician, you have friends all over the world. Yeah, of course, and many are tuning in right now. Um, I, I got messages from people in France and Senegal and, and uh, Guadeloupe, uh, different places, that, and they're tuning in because they wanted to to see uh, and hear some of the things that I've been doing. And uh, I, like I said, I'm, I, I thank the Creator every day that um, uh, I'm okay, my family's okay, mm -hmm. and um, we're just holding on and we're trying to keep positive and keep moving on uh, with optimism. That's the, the best way I can describe it. I mean, also staying vigilant too. You know, I, I don't go out much. I go out to exercise, I ride my bike. And, mm -hmm. uh, we go out once a week for food and that's it. And I'm pretty much in until things uh, get a little better. You know, um, I know a lot of people are anxious to get out right away. I think that can be a big mistake. Uh, I agree. You know, no doubt. You know, because uh, as with everything else, uh, uh, you know, like the Spanish flu, different things like that, the second wave that came around was actually more deadly than the first wave. So you have to. And as our, our elders say, haste makes waste. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, 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 we could we could be a little easy and just you know ease into it without you know rushing and realize the the lessons that we've learned during this you know stay home this the connectivity with our families you nope. know so many reasons why you know our communities and our families were so close with one another especially you know for me growing up and you know my parents generation and my grandparents mm -hmm. generation is that. Um, you know, they sat around for meals, they sat around and, you know, watched entertainment, you know, either on television together or right. listening right. to the radio, but it's that communal experience communal. instead right. of, you know, me being in my bedroom, my kids being in another bedroom, right. but we're actually coming together and having great conversations. No doubt. And that's very, very important. That's very, And that's what goes into what you just said. All of that goes into the music. When you compose, when you play, it all it all it all comes out. You know, all of those type of experiences you want to draw from, all of the things that you that you have uh, experienced in your life that you have learned, and we're still learning. You know, yes, we're still learning. Uh, uh, I, I I try to get by with some of the elders always uh, see them and to hear and just listen to some of the wisdom and knowledge that they have. Uh, my godmother's in uh, Long Island. Uh, Juanita Smith, she's uh, 92 mm -hmm. in July, and um, I just always love going to see her because she always lays some I call the jewels, some heavy stuff that you know, because her husband was the great Hale Smith, um, mm -hmm. poser, and um, Hale, uh, iconic figure in music, and uh, he wrote and arranged and composed in jazz and also in classical idiom. So I want to be around the elders as much as possible. George Coleman, another great, great uh, musician and master, uh, and he's also very open. Uh, I love to go by and, and see him, and he lays uh, a lot of great jewels on me with the music. But this, this, this is so important that we stay in uh, touch with our elders and 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 uh, and, and also to, so we can keep that that lineage going. Um, Absolutely. You know, you know, I just spoke to you know, Candido the other day. Candido last Wednesday, turned mm -hmm. 99. Incredible. And uh, I don't know anybody who's 99. You know? <laughs> you know, the last time I saw him was the last time I saw Dr. Weston. Um, 
at his house when we were celebrating Dr. Weston's birthday and Candido was there and you were there and exactly. the Ganawa musicians there. Yeah. And it was just, you know, not only celebrating, you know, Dr. Weston's, you know, birthday. Right. Um, but just the energy and creativity when you have such talent in the room and the Ganawan players started playing and you just, you know, right. felt all the ancestors coming back into the room just to, you know, celebrate one of their own. Definitely, definitely. Well, you know, speaking of Dr. West, I'd love to play a song for you, uh, one of his songs. Okay. That, that's that's on my new recording. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called, this is a song called Where. In fact, okay. what I want to do, let me, let me read, read you the the lyrics because the lyrics are very profound. Okay. So the lyrics, a lot of um, uh, Dr. West's music uh, have lyrics that were written by Majority of one or two gentlemen, Langston Hughes or mm -hmm. Don Hendricks, the great vocalist Don Hendricks. And this mm -hmm. one where, um, I love these words that John wrote. So he says, where, oh where, where can a heart find relief? Where can a soul find its peace? Oh Lord, please tell me where, where, oh where? Where can a man find a friend? Where will his trouble all end? Oh Lord, please tell me where, where? Some say here, some say there. You alone can give the answer where. Where, oh where? Where can a soul sing its song? And where can a people never do wrong where or oh where wow that is powerful that's the lyrics by john hendricks uh -huh. and the music by dr randy weston okay <laughs> Thank you, TK. <laughs> you know, 
know, those lyrics are just so appropriate for this moment in time because you know oh, so no, many no. of us no, have no. questions about you know wh where are we where are we going what just we where find, right 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 where, where can we find a friend oh it's very uh, it, you know it's almost like a prophecy you know reading those lyrics with the music and uh you know randy has another song uh i recorded called the last day and also okay about, uh, well, I didn't see all the lyrics for that, but it's also got that same type of vibe. But you know, um, I've also been thinking uh, that in order to move forward, that we have to get our frame of mind also out of the news. It's yes. important uh, to to detox try, ourselves. We have to try to block it out because mm -hmm. you know, just every day bombarded with the. The, the amount of, you know, it's interesting how the news always focuses on uh, the negative, you know, the amount of deaths that uh, this day and that day, and, and and not on the positive, you know, uh, how about the amount of people that, that, that survived the, the virus? Give those statistics on a daily basis. The know. people who are surviving the acts of humanity. Exactly. Kindness. Mm -hmm. People uplifting one another. Exactly. Communities coming together in ways that you've never seen before. Exactly. There's a an actor that has a show called uh, um, Some Good News mm -hmm. that he started doing just to just to do exactly that to just share some good news about what people are doing, you know, in their own individual lives that never make you know mainstream media. Yeah. No. No doubt. No doubt. And to me, that's. What we need to focus on exactly what you just said. We can, and, you know, hearing some good medicine, some good music from yeah. people like TK Blue. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I was thinking of a uh, 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 a lot of uh, folks. I mean, that I know quite personally um, that have been affected tremendously by this uh, uh, the new crisis, and mm -hmm. and music is a great medium to, to to help us get through and help us heal. I'll play another song for you. Uh, All right. Yeah, this Give one, me another dose of TK Blue Medicine. <laughs> yeah. This one is from um, uh, my recording, Amour. You know, mm -hmm. Amour was, 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 uh, came out in 2017, and it was dedicated to the period of time I lived in, in Paris, France, and all the wonderful experiences I had living in Europe. And, and just like what you just said, Cheryl, you know, I, I would not even be here today had it not been for many friends and extended family, people who reached out and helped me. Mm -hmm. Contacts or say, you can stay here, you can do this, or check this gig out, or check this person out. It's all about sharing and giving. And exactly. I wouldn't be here today if it was not for uh, for those people. So so the so the recording was, was about that that vibe. And and this song is called the Requiem. For a loved one, part two. Um, part one was actually done on a recording called "The Warm Embrace," which featured Russell Malone on that track and Jay White, uh, SC and SC on bass, Renard Harper. The new one, uh, "Requiem Part Two," is on uh, um, a more, and that features uh, Warren Wolf on piano and vibes, and uh, Eric Kennedy on drum and Jeff Reed on bass. So I'll play for you an example of. Uh, Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
technology and how, you know, we're able to connect with people, you know, all over the world. Um, you know, TK, as you think about how, you know, the world will slowly open back up, you know, how are you, what are your, some of your concerns as we move forward from a musician standpoint? Well, you know, from a musician standpoint, obviously the, it, it's, a, it's a really a, a, a very, very, dicey situation, to put it mildly. Um, you want to play. I want to play. Everybody wants to play. Uh, forget the monetary game. We want to be around people. We want to play for people. We want to share the gift of what uh, God has given us as artists to share with humanity, with the world. At the same time, we want to be careful. Um, I would have, I guess, some trepidation initially of going to small venues or being in crowded space uh, with public, with people, that, and especially if there's no cure yet or no uh, vaccine, um, it would be a little, little tricky, you know, to be in these kind of environments. If you're in a concert, big concert stage where musicians uh, have a good spacing and the audience can have some spacing, uh, that could be a, a, a good scenario but as far as the, the clubs um it's going to be tricky uh, i'm not going to feel very comfortable initially uh performing uh in small venues and being very close with public uh, until there's a vaccine or some type of a cure or some some kind of assurance that we know this virus is uh is finished or the pandemic is over you know so i think that's what everybody's waiting for so I don't know. It's going to be um, what I've been reading that they say music or the venues and concerts and things like that means maybe some of the last uh, things to to come back in the fold. Uh, but again, we, we, we really don't know. We're just playing it uh, right now. We have to take it every day a step at a time. I, I can't plan too far ahead. Just plan mm -hmm. for the, the next <laughs> day. And right. That's all we can do and, and, and wait to see what has been determined. Because a lot of that, as far as vaccine, a cure, things like that, we really determine going forward how we're going to move ahead. Without those things in place, and with knowing that people are still becoming infected uh, worldwide, and people are still uh, transitioning because of this virus, it's mm -hmm. very difficult for many people, not just musicians, but anybody in general, to go into any type of public sector and work in close proximity to other folks that they don't know. Um, so, and it's not natural for us not to, you know, greet each other with a, you know, tap on the shoulder or an embrace. A hug and, uh, you know, it's, this is it's a unnatural. Whole, <laughs> this is a whole new time period now. You know, uh, Brother Whitten, when his father passed, uh, mm -hmm. something very profound, I, I, I felt it was deeply moving when he said his father embraced reality, that's a, a message I think that we all need to 
really do. We have to embrace reality. This is the new reality right now, what we're facing, and how can we move forward uh, in a positive way. Um, one good thing I saw uh, uh, yesterday or the day before, I can't remember on the internet, which is fantastic, uh, Julius, a uh, great saxophonist who teaches out in Newark, uh, runs a jazz program at Newark Academy. He, he had a, a big band. Okay. Her, yeah, on the internet. Everybody, All right. Boom. And it sounded fantastic. I mean, yes, you know, everybody was in their own location, but right. it shows that it, that it can be done, and it really sounded great. I was very, very uh, impressed with the overall sound. When you have the young musicians playing in different locations, uh, mm -hmm. near each other, and everybody counting off and getting that time together and playing right. on point. So, so this is what we have to do. We have to we have to keep uh, inventing these things. Um, another good friend of mine, great flouters, uh, Andrea Brackfell. She's doing a lot of stuff like this on Zoom and, and mm -hmm. turned me on to Jam Kazam, uh, where you can play with other musicians in sync without losing, without a delay. So I think okay. there's a lot of great musicians who are doing very innovative things to, to get through this time period. And I think that's what we have to do as well. And, and, and of course, keep prayer foremost. In your in, in your psyche, in your mind, in your consciousness, pray absolutely to, to uh, whatever religion you belong to. Doesn't matter, whatever uh, you, you know. Just pray, and just pray for resolution, and pray for world peace, and pray for that you you know we, we get we get beyond this uh, crisis and we come together closer and mm -hmm. human family. You know, because in the last few years, as, as we all know. Um, and not going into politics, but, but the whole world has been very divided, very, very divided, pitting one against the other, everyone with a different ideological, uh, 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 wanting a different outcome, everybody with a different ide ideological uh, thought process, that their way is the right way, and, and as a result, a, a lot of, of, of this discord, disconnect. So, so now we almost feel the hand of God kind of just coming in and just rounding us up. all up to, yes. to bring us all closer together. We embrace each other, right? And, and, and come together, regardless of our religion, regardless of our age, of our color, race, creed, whatever. We need to embrace each other and help each other in, in the name of humanity. And that's exactly one of the things that I've. I, I, I myself will, will, will work toward. So those are some profound words of wisdom, Mr. TK Blue, that you well, shared not only yeah. with our audience, but also with musicians. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's, to me, everybody has to find their path, but that's the path that I, I, I'm going to travel on. And mm -hmm. hopefully, like I said, on the, on the other side of this, we'll be much closer as a human family. And, and hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll get to the point where we can really, re and then respect the environment. Like we've all just acknowledged how great the air feels now, the, the skyline, things like that. Well, let's mm -hmm. go back to where it was, you know, because that's that, that's what the big engine is waiting for. Let's ramp up the economy, let's ramp it, let's get it going. And the big engine is just waiting to again, to sputter uh, more pollution and, and uh, you know, we can use this as a symbol to 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 learn from and try to work towards that because it can be done. It know? can be done. We see it happening. Yes. That we know how to sit still and be still. Yes. You know, as, you know, yes. peace be still. That's what I always think about when, uh, you know, when things seem a little chaotic. That sometimes you just have to have a moment where you just yes have stillness, and then that's when you know so much wisdom and. And information can come at you when you kind of calm all the the chaos. Right, I agree. I agree totally, totally, totally. I agree. So, where can our audience uh, find TK Blue and keep up to date on what you're doing, where you're doing it, how you're doing well, it? Yes, I think. Well, here's the thing. You know, uh, I mean, I had a lot of gigs posted on my website uh, mm -hmm. in June, and actually, I had stuff through the summer into the fall, but. Nothing is is happening right now, uh, gig wise. You just have to wait. Uh, everything that's on my website is um, not going to happen. 
So the best thing is to just keep in touch with the, my website, www.tkblue.com. And okay. also, I want to mention uh, that a good way to help artists, mm -hmm. all of us, uh, whether whatever medium we're in, when we're, we're, we're unable to work, you can buy our recordings. That's right. right. You know, please, uh, you can go to my website, tkblue.com, uh -huh. and www.tkblue.com, and you'll have uh, access to get some recordings. So I think uh, if, if folks go and purchase recordings or downloads or whatever it is your fancy, that I think that's the way, that, that's a great step to, to support mm -hmm. uh, the music. And I implore everyone to support artists. Definitely. You know, Buy their CDs, buy their prints, you know, send a little donation, cash app, Venmo, no, PayPal, no. some artists. No, that's I think that's the way to go. We can we can support each other that way until we figure things out and we get to the other side of this crisis and figure out which way we're going to go now and and what's going to be the best uh, the best pathway forward. Okay. Do you have one more song for us? Sure. We do so. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. You know, I would like to. Uh, I would like to draw attention to uh, the great Melba Liston, but she's okay. also. I also honored her uh, on my new recording. I want to play one of the songs uh, on the recording uh, that she composed called Insomnia. On the recording, it features a fantastic pianist, Kelly Green, playing mm -hmm. uh, in a duo. But I want to feature Melba. I had a chance okay. to know her uh, very well and hang out with her, and she was a giant, a giant in jazz. And quite often, women are overlooked. Their, their acknowledgments, their, 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 you know, their accomplishments. Excuse me, their accomplishments mm -hmm. uh, are not not uh, uh, emphasized enough, and they need to be because uh, there are some fantastic uh, women composers, arrangers and performance in jazz. So I want to do one of the songs. Um, okay. This one is called, as I mentioned, it's called uh, Insomnia, and it's on my new re recording, The Rhythms Continue. Okay.
you, Cheryl. I don't hear you. I said thank you so much oh, for yes, allowing yes. us to come into your home, into your studio. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you, Cheryl. It's been a pleasure uh, spending today with you, and I hope we can do it again. And um, God bless you and Chris, uh, you, you all the jewels. And please, people, you, if you can get an opportunity when this is all over to visit your gallery, Cheryl, in the uh, Bridge Art Gallery, Bridge Art Gallery. That's correct. They are, yes. Please check them out. They're doing some fantastic things and also a beautiful festival they do in September. Hopefully, we'll, we'll have your festival in September. You got to visit <laughs> and, um, you know, support the, support the arts. Uh, that's the best uh, advice I can give for, for everyone, to support the arts in any way you can and stay safe and well. And, and may God bless and protect, protect you all in your families. And thank you. Thank you, my brother, my Aquarian brother, my soul Aquarian yeah, brother, that's right. for, for doing this. And it, it really has been music, you know, for our soul. And no, no, no. Um, I just have to reiterate everything that TK said about supporting artists, supporting musicians, buy a CD, um, and, you know, just touch base with not only musicians, but, you know, your family and friends, because, you know, we're all we got. <laughs> No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Thank you all so right, much, Cheryl. You. Wishing you, you and Chris, a uh, beautiful day. And God bless you all. And we'll connect again soon. Absolutely. So, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Destination Jazz TV. Um, you can find us at destinationjazz.tv. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, please continue to support the arts. Please continue to practice social distancing. And remember, um, physical distancing doesn't necessarily mean social distancing that, you know, we're still connected with one another, but we just need to keep a little space between one another to stay healthy. So uh, thanks again. I'd like to thank, you know, my husband, technician, creative, uh, all things wonderful, Christopher Mack. And uh, we send love to all of you that are watching, continue to be safe and take care. Shaka Khan, and you're watching Destination Jazz.